Hello everyone, this is Skyguy with a tutorial on basic TNT cannons for faction servers. I played factions for a few months on Minecraft, but mostly I stopped playing due to losing interest in factions and sort of in Minecraft in general. However, it can be a fun uh, game mode to play, and I do find raiding to be the most fun part of Minecraft factions. Raiding is, of course, when you break into other people's bases and take their items. There's also a uh, player versus player PvP aspect to factions, but I don't really find it that interesting. And the reason why is because it's sort of uh, just dependent on who's got the better weapons and, and uh, stats and uh, the PvP part of Minecraft is not really that interesting. So, the raiding is kind of fun, and a big part of raiding is TNT cannons. So, let's go over the goal of factions and uh, raiding. So, let's say, for example, that you found the base of an enemy or an ally, to be honest, and you want to take their stuff. So the other faction will have this line claimed. You won't be able to have you won't be able to break any blocks and you won't be able to open the doors. So you need to build a TNT cannon to blow through the walls. So first of all let's go over the basics of what is a TNT cannon, how does it work? And I'm going to build one over here. I'm first going to build the cannon with the building blocks. I'm using stone, it doesn't have to be stone. It's going to be 10 blocks long. It doesn't have to be this long. However, when I pour the water, which is part of the TNT cannon, we see that the water reaches to this length, and I have room to put a slab here. And the way it's going to work is that the projectile is going to sit on top of the slab, and the propellant is going to be placed in the water. Make sure not to cover up the water source. And the way it works is that the propellant will be lit first, and then the projectile will be lit afterwards. This TNT will explode and cause this to be flying in the air and explode at a far distance. So now we just need the redstone to light the TNT at different times. So we're going to put a line of redstone across here to make sure that all of the propellant is lit. And also we're going to put redstone here. And then we're going to connect them. However, we need the redstone here to have delays, so we're going to put some repeaters here. And the amount of repeaters, the amount of delay you want, varies with the distance and the power of the TNT cannon. The maximum amount of repeaters is 10 repeaters on full delay. But we can do something like this, it doesn't matter. And then connect these with a button. I use a stone button because on factions only members of your factions can use stone buttons whereas anyone can use wood buttons. So that's the basic TNC cannon and I'll press it and see what happens. That TNT gets lit first. The projectile gets lit. It flies and explodes somewhere farther down here. Um, just for interest's sake, we'll see how many chunks it went. Well, 
went to about two chunks. And that's the basic TNT cannon, but there's ways where we can improve this. First of all, we want to make sure that this cannon shoots straight. Because when you have the TNT here, when it's lit, it actually wiggles to the side somehow. So it might not actually shoot in a straight line. It might actually go to the left or to the right. And we don't want this to happen. So in order to fix this, we're going to put a glass block here to make sure that the TNT is straight. And it has to be glass because the redstone will not transmit through the glass. And second of all, we're going to add a roof. And this is going to decrease the power. However, it's going to make sure it's going to make your shot straight. And that's important. I like sh making a shoot straight rather in an upward arc because uh, it's much more accurate and you don't have to waste time trying to aim an upward arc arcing shot. It's just a waste of time. And TNT cannon in general, it's a time consuming thing. So if we have with this improvements, it's not going to change that much, but it's going to be shooting a lot more straight. And this roof actually it doesn't have to be this high. We can make the roof a little bit if we want it to go farther, we can make the roof a little bit higher, like this, for instance. But a roof in general is nice, so you don't have a hugely arcing shot. So there, it has quite a predictable path. In fact, it landed in pretty much the same spot. So this is great. Now, what if we needed more power to this cannon? because um, in factions, the other faction might have multiple lands claimed around it, so that you have to shoot from a farther distance. So in order to add more power, we're going to add another layer of propellant. And we're just going to add row like this and then we have to make sure that this uh, redstone is connected so we can just put a slab I believe We have to be. No, should be fine. Going to test this out. actually does not work. There we go. So now I believe that both rows of components will be lit. And so we can have two rows of propellant here. And top row here. And then add a projectile on here. And try and fire it this time. And now it 
it's going much farther. In fact, it had an uh, upward arc, which was not very useful for me. So, actually, I need the barrel to be longer to make sure that it shoots in a straight line. doesn't really matter how long the barrel is, but let's say in general, the longer the barrel, the more accurate it will be, but maybe less power the cannon will have. So you can see we're using a lot of TNT, but in order to raid bases, you should have a lot of TNT. Actually, this block here um, I should maybe leave this out because it might blow up the cannon. So that was actually not very impressive. The distance was about the same. However, we can even raise the roof here. And I should be able to go farther. I should leave this one out. So that's the basic idea. Um, there's lots that you can fill around with this cannon. Lots of adjustments that are possible. And for instance, let's say we want them this cannon to be automatic because we want to fire a lot of shots. We can replace the blocks with dispensers like this. And we just have to replace the redstone by shift clicking. I have to load each dispenser now with TNT. However, this will save time because you don't have to place each TNT. So it saves time in a way. In other ways, it wastes time. And I could also put a dispenser for the projectile, but I'm not going to bother. And if we fire this, it should work the same way. Yeah, same as ex expected. So that's the basic TNT cannon, and of course we can add more power, more layers, and there's other improvements that I haven't mentioned. I'm going to now show the steps required to build this basic TNT and cannon to get into, let's say, this base here, which is floating in midair.
Alright. What do you do? Try and shoot it. Oh, a little bit too much power. More, more power than necessary. And the TNT didn't blow up in time, so I can decrease the delay a little bit. And there you have your hole. And for instance, you can try an ender pearl inside now. And you're inside. It concludes this tutorial for basic cannon. Uh, I just like to mention, um, well, how do you defend against this cannon now? Now we know that this base that we made was more than just a little bit vulnerable. Well. best way to defend against this is to pour water all over your base. It doesn't matter whether your base is on the ground or in the air. You need to cover your base with water because TNT doesn't normally explode in the water and it will force the cannoner to use something called a hybrid cannon which is more difficult to use but this cannon right here cannot get into this base which is covered with water you'll need a different cannon which is a hybrid cannon which I might explain in a different video to get into this base but that's it for now I hope you enjoyed this video